Yeah. So I want us to get into dedication of the sanctuary because we are gearing towards dedicating our own sanctuary. And this is why this, this topic, this theme came because of dedicating our sanctuary next year. Now we want to zero in into the sanctuary dedication. And let's listen and let's learn something from the, the dedication of the sanctuary. So if you may recall, we started learning, when we started learning this topic, we said dedication is also the action of dedicating a church or even other buildings. Dedication here is the act of consecrating an altar. So what we shall be doing in January when we are dedicating our sanctuary here, we shall be consecrating the altar, the altar of the Lord. Just like we have been sanctifying ourselves, consecrating ourselves, waiting for the Lord to visit us, that day we shall be, you know, consecrating the altar of the Lord in this sanctuary. And therefore, as we dedicate our sanctuary, this cathedral of worship, we will be expecting the presence of God to come upon the sanctuary as we consecrate the altar. We have also already learned that the Lord does not appear when you are not sanctified. And that's why he said, I want to visit you. And by the time I visit you, you need to sanctify yourself. So as a church, we will need to sanctify ourselves as we wait for sanctification or for consecration of the altar. So that the Lord will show up, the Lord will appear, and the Lord will visit us that day. Many times we don't experience the visitation of the Lord because we are not prepared for him to visit us. And he is not a normal visitor. Of course the Lord is always with us. But I want to tell you, if you want this, this demonstration, if you want this manifestation, you need to go beyond the normal life we live. We need to sanctify ourselves and be prepared for his visitation. So what we are saying is that as the people of God, we should personally, not as a group, personally prepare for the Lord's visitation. Just like he told Moses, Moses, go and tell those people because they wa I want to visit them. Let them prepare themselves. So as we prepare for the, the for, 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 for dedication of our, our sanctuary and the consecration of our altar, we must prepare ourselves for God's visitation. Praise the Lord. Is somebody with me? We must prepare ourselves for his visitation. And we must sanctify our lives. We must regularly live a life of sanctification as the children of God. Unajua pale inje watu, awaoni wakofu kama nikitu. Ukisema ni meokoka, wamesikia iyo neno mpaka wamechoka. Lakini awaoni iyo, iyo, iyo ni meokoka ayambatani na matendo. Iyo kusema ni meokoka watu wa meizoea. And that's why people don't even care. Nowadays, if you go to social media, they are accusing pastors so much. They, are, they don't like us, especially us pastors and bishops. I don't know what we have done with the people. It means there is something we have not done well. So we ukisema umeokoka, you have said nothing. Sanctify yourself and let your life speak. Let your life speak. When you walk, let your life speak. You cannot say you are sanctified, yet you are behaving like any other common man, any other common woman. You are talking like any other person. Praise the Lord. We must dedicate ourselves. We must sanctify ourselves. We must be regular in the word of in repenting our sins and forgiving others. Because God will never forgive you your sins if you are not forgiving others. You know, I've also realized, brethren, there are people who are wired differently from the way we imagine. People don't want to forgive. Forgiveness is a hard word. To come out of your mouth that I have forgiven you. I want to remind us, brethren, that even when Stephen was being stoned, 
he forgave those people. They were not even asking for forgiveness. Pastor J, you don't wait for me to come and say I'm sorry. Forgive me even when I have not said I'm sorry. Somebody, are you hearing? Let's live a life of forgiving. You don't have to wait until I come and kneel before you and I apologize. But it's good to apologize. It's good to go and tell people I'm sorry I did this bad. But even before they come, forgive them. What time did Stephen have to forgive people? He just looked up into the heavens and saw Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Lord. And Lord, and he said, forgive them, Lord, because they don't know what they are doing. They don't understand anything. Forgive them. The same with Jesus. Jesus was said, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Nobody had pleaded for forgiveness. So church, we need to learn to forgive. Elder Mwamba, walk in forgiveness. Just forgive people, release people. Don't tie yourself, because when you keep it in your heart, it will bother you. You cannot pray the way you are supposed to pray. You can't greet people the way you are supposed to greet. You can't embrace each other. And there is something we usually do in the church. We say, hold hands together as we pray. There are people who look around and wonder, who do I hold now? Because you are, you are, the next guy there is your enemy, has annoyed you. Somebody has annoyed you so much. But you are in the house of the Lord. What do you do? That is why we need to be prepared every time that we have forgiven people. We have released them. We have released them. They can shout and call you names, but release them. Praise the Lord. You will be happy. You will live well. You will sleep well at night. Do you know there are people who don't sleep? They keep wondering, why did so and so say that word to me? I, 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 I have a characteristic which is not sometimes very nice because I was brought up by a brother, my brother who, who led me to the Lord. Uh, he was a very powerful and charismatic man. And he was, he was just right on point. He will look at you, professor, and tell you direct, I don't like your time. <laughs> You know, courtesy was a problem to him. So you, <laughs> so he liked me because I was willing to cope with that characteristic. And we would be doing many things together because he even brought me to the Lord. And therefore, I learned his characteristics. And to, to undo, I think Pastor Anderito, you know him, to undo... <laughs> <laughs> he was a teacher of Pasanderitu in Alliance. So to undo that bit of character, sometimes I miss, I mess, I mess and say some things. And one of the, the, the lessons I've learned in life is never tell a woman she is fat. <laughs> but I, 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 I have found myself saying it once in a while. I say, Oh my God, I have realized women don't sleep that night. They say, why, why did you say that? Why did so and so say that, those words? Eh? So if I've ever told you that, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Eh? So, so, so you, we must look for cautious words to say things. But even if we don't, Keep forgiving people so that you can sleep well in the night. You don't remember those things. And the Lord will be a blessing to you. Kwa hivo wacha nionge na kiswa ili ili neno niseme ya kwamba. Unajua roo mutakatifu ya kiru ya kingia. Kiswa ili inakuwa sasa language yangu. But without that I can't speak two words in Swahili. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to make it easier for, for, for in Swahili. Lasma tuishi maisha ya kujitakaza na ya kutubu na ya kusameana. See, that's a good language. Maisha ya kutaka kujitakaza. Kila wakati tunajitakaza. Iyo ndiyo maisha ya kuishi. Lasma tulani kuishi maisha ya kujitakaza, maisha ya kutubu na maisha ya 
kusamehana. If we go that way, church, we shall be prepared for the coming of the Lord. We shall be prepared for his visitation. But as long as we are living lives which are double, you know there are people who live double lives. Eh? In the church, they are holier than thou. Out there, they are terrible people. They, you can never even say they are born again. So brethren, we need to learn to live good lives. And that will help us. So without forgiveness, God is not able to also accept our, our repentance. So we need to keep forgiving others so that God can accept our repentance. When you repent, God forgives you because you have been repenting before him and you have been forgiving others. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, if you look at it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, and in New Living Translation, it says, and forgive us as our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So if you are praying a prayer like that, you cannot manage because you are not forgiving others. So it's important to forgive others so that you can pray the Lord's Prayer. Or you can pray any prayer before the Lord so that he can also forgive you. So let this become our lifestyle. It's, it can become our lifestyle. It can become an habit. You know, an habit is something that you repeat like seven times, it gets into your system. And you begin to live good lives. Praise the Lord. I hope I've, uh, I've shared something that is important to your lives and it can help you. Now, in matters of dedicating temples or houses of God, we cannot learn from any other teacher than Solomon. There is no better teacher in the Bible for dedicating sanctuaries than Solomon did. And I want to take us through slowly on how Solomon dedicated the temple of God in Jerusalem so that we can pick a few lessons. Because I have come to learn every scripture that was written in the Bible. Of course, the Bible says it was inspired by God. But it is there for us to learn. There is always something to learn in the scripture. Even those things which look funny, they look interesting. They have, they have been put there for us to learn. Have you looked at the Bible and some scriptures don't seem to speak to you? They are there for some, some reason. So, as we go through the dedication of the temple of Solomon, we should be able to pick certain things that can be a blessing to our lives. <sighs> can we pray first before we continue? Oh Lord, we thank you. We bless your name, oh God, as we continue with this ministry. As we continue with this topic, as we continue with this message of today, I pray for your presence to be here, to minister to us. Give us revelations, give us teachings today that can change our lives, can make us move much better in our lives today. Even as we prepare for the dedication of our sanctuary next year, we want to prepare ourselves as well because of your visitation. Your visitation is so important in our lives. And we cannot live the same way we have been living. We need to be different as the sanctuary is dedicated. We thank you, Lord, and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we begin by the ark of the covenant being brought to the temple. Solomon finishes building the temple, and then he begins to bring the ark of the Lord in the temple. So, for those who have looked at the Bible carefully, uh, the sanctuary or the magnificent temple in Jerusalem was completed in seven years. Solomon built the temple of God in Jerusalem, the so-called magnificent temple, because it was beautiful. It was great. It took seven years. And in my spirit, I was saying, God help us to finish this temple before seven years. And unfortunately, Corona came. <laughs> corona came. 
We began, uh, the, the, those of you who calculate with your Mendel, you know, some of you learned Mendel works. Eh? In, when we were in school, there, there was something called Mendel or something, where you are told to calculate things mentally very quickly. So we launched and we did groundbreaking of this place in November 25th, I believe, or around there. I'll look at my record. 2016, and now we are in September 2024. How many years are those? Just around eight years. So I was believing God we can do like Solomon. We complete our sanctuary in seven years. But Corona came, unfortunately. And God knows everything that happens as a reason, <laughs> as a reason. So Solomon completed the temple in seven years. Solomon used the most expensive and the quality materials. Solomon never went for cheap things. And I thank God for, for Kamau, Feli. Feli is like expensive, beautiful things. That man is blessed. You will see the door. Uh, the, I haven't seen the gate, but you will see the gate. You will see the gate. Together with the chairman, Tom, they love beautiful things. You know, you know Tom is a lure from Siaya. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and and uh, these guys don't joke. You have seen now professor and dresses. These people don't joke. <laughs> so... They, they want the most beautiful. And it's good uh, uh, we can live here around here. This thing being done here is not normal. It's, it's going to be beautiful. But we don't want you to see. Don't come before we finish. You come when we are dedicating. You may take pictures in the city. Praise the Lord. And we will make this some things that make God just appear. Hey, the beauty of his holiness, which has appeared because of the way you have done things. Solomon knew that. And, and other wood, expensive wood, he also got some skilled labor from Lebanon. And together with these skilled laborers, they did something very special. But this does not mean they never got errors like us. You know, we also have done some errors. Tunanjenga, tunakuta hii, hainja, ingia, vizuri, tunabomoa. I'm sure these seven years... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure because he had all the money. He, he was not struggling like us. As we have been raising from the ties offering commitment. So in a tiririka to come a magic desert. In a toka to pole 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 pole. To nangaliana na macho. Some of you don't like when I speak because you ni mekuvinya sana. Yeah? But I thank God for you. Amen. And I love you. Do you still love me? I'm doing all this for us and for our children, and our children's children. We are making history. Hallelujah. We are making, this is how history is made. So that people will say, you build a cathedral of worship after many years. You know, you know, Jesus can come even today. See that one we know. He started coming when I was in primary school, when I came to know about Jesus. When I came to know about Jesus, I was in primary school and I was wondering why should I continue reading? Because Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. So live, live as though Jesus is coming today, but plan as though Jesus is going to stay for a long time. Hallelujah. <laughs> plan for a long life, but live a sanctified life as though Jesus is coming now. Praise the Lord. But don't neglect everything because he's coming now. You'll be embarrassed, you will backslide because you say he has cheated us. He is not coming soon. Now, now. So, Solomon went through maybe the processes we have gone through. We have gone through a hard time, but him, life was easier because his father David 
had accumulated all the monies that was needed, all the materials that was needed. Him was just to build. For us here, we have to raise the money, and we have to push and pull, and we have to get contractors. Some of them are good, others are not doing the what we want. And you know, it's a complicated thing. But we thank God. But Solomon, the, the word I want you to get is that he used the best that would be available. And the, some of us, let's learn to do best things. Let's, let's not just be doing things anyhow and they say it's okay. No, it's not okay. You are a child of God. Do the best that you can do. Wear the best clothes that you can wear. Build the best house that you can afford. Do whatever you can and make it clean. Sweep it. Eh? When I was a bachelor, we used to cook ugali. Ugali was the easiest to cook. And then, uh, because men don't like washing plates and all that, you put them in, the, in a sukuria, you put water for those ugali things to get out, and then you push it under the bed. You know, we didn't have bedrooms. We didn't have bedrooms. Some of you are lucky to have been born in houses with the bedrooms. <laughs> you push it under the bed. <laughs> now we know better. We should never do such things. We should always make sure our house is clean. It smells well. Everything is good. If a visitor comes, they find your bed looking nice. You know, men wake up and they don't even want to, to spread their bed. Eh? Let me not go there. Some men are very annoyed now. They are quiet. Let's continue. So after finishing the building, Solomon organized for the Ark of the Covenant to be brought to the house by the Levites, as was the wish of the father. You know, his father was wishing to build a house of God from God because God was living in the tent ever since the, te the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant was created in Mount Sinai. God always moved with the tents and living in tabernacles. God was actually, uh, he was represented by the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant contained the covenant, the, the laws of Moses. So, and that's where God was residing. And they used to move within God all the time. And when the Ark of the Covenant is taken away by the Philistines, the Israelites lose power completely because God has left them. And whoever keeps it in their house, God may decide to overreact and kill those people or whatever it happens. Others who are rushers will be able to maintain the Ark of the Covenant in their homes and they will be blessed. That's why David said, oh no, that guy has been so much blessed. I'm going for it. <laughs> I'm going to pick it. The presence of God is so important in our lives. When the presence of God walks with you, my brethren, you'll be happy. You'll be blessed. You'll be doing well. Am I seeing a teach somewhere? A teach just stand and you arrive and just wave at us. We have not seen you for a while. God bless you. God bless you. The, these people are doing a very good work at home. At home. Very good work. If you visit them, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. May you prosper, by my brother. Prosper so much. And he'll... Um, I have no words. Praise the Lord. So this is what was happening. So Solomon decided, now we are bringing the Ark of the Covenant from the tent where it has been for all these years. And that was the wish of David. And that's why God blessed David, because David thought about doing a temple for the Ark of God so that God can come and live in the house, but not in the tent. Now, so... It was very important for, 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 for David to organize an event. He did not just walk in and say, Levites, go and carry the Ark of the Covenant. He said, let's have a function. Let's us have a celebration. Because we are bringing the presence of God to the house of God. Hallelujah. We are bringing the presence of God 
to the house of God. We are bringing the ark of the covenant to the house of God. And he called all the people. Let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, and verse 4 and 6. The rest you, the rest you can read. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1 to 2 says, in King James Version, Thus all the work where it can be interfered with, it will be a better place. Chapter 5, verse 1 to 2 says, Father had dedicated Solomon assembled to bring up the ark of the covenant. We go to verse 4. The important people to come uh, in the city of David, which is in Zion, to bring it now to the new temple where. Uh, Solomon had, had, had built. Verse 4. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. The ark of the covenant could not be picked by anybody else other than the priests, the Levites. The Levites. And they brought up the ark and the, temb and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the temple, in the tabernacle. This indeed the priests and the Levites bring up. Verse 6. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before their ark sacrificed sheep and oxen which could not be told or numbered for multitude. That's King James Version. If you read it in another version, it will be maybe more interesting. Now, when the ark of the covenant was brought into the house of God, they celebrated and they enjoyed themselves. But the most important thing that happened, a sacrament which is so important, which people keep ignoring, was actually the sacrifice. The sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, sacrifice. Without sacrifice, brethren, we are going nowhere. Without sacrifice, we are not doing well. And that is why Jesus himself offered himself as a living sacrifice so that we can be who we are today. So he prepared a sacrifice because the presence of God has come into the house. The celebration cannot go on without sacrifice. And the sacrifice was in the form of, of animals. The sacrifice was in the form of animals. And the Bible says they sacrificed sheep and oxen which could not be told or numbered. They could not number the amount of sheep and oxen that they offered that day. Sometimes I think we joke. Eh? Look, look at that, that. Solomon knew if I want the presence of God with me, if I want favor from God, if I want God to walk with me, if I want to show God that I love him, praise the Lord somebody. If I want to show my wife I love her, what would I do? Will I just tell her, I love you, I love you, sweetie, I love you, honey, I love you, tomatoes, I love you. <laughs> eh? Somebody said love does not bring food on the table. It is action, isn't it? It is action. Now, offering or sacrifice shows God how much you love him. How much do I love God? So when an offering bag is being passed and you are offering unto God, think about that. Whatever you are putting there, you are telling God, I love you this much. And as Bishop to him Singh says, God looks at what has remained in the pocket. <laughs> Then he does the ratios, the mathematics. That is why when that woman who placed a coin, Jesus said she has offered better than everybody else who brought millions and brought what? And brought everything. This woman has done the best because according to the ratios, she had offered 100%. Praise the Lord. She remained with nothing. I'm not telling you to offer and you remain with nothing because you will bother me with the transport. But try to show God that you love him. 
Some of us come just because it's, it's a routine. Don't take sacrifice as a routine. Sacrifice is not a routine. It is worship. Tell your neighbor, sacrifice is worship. It is worship to God. It is not a routine. It is worship. So you don't just go into your pocket and say, ah, pastor, who you pastor, anataka kukula pesa yetu sana. Pacha ni mpeleke five shillings. <laughs> you are not bringing it to me. You are bringing it to the Lord. And you are telling God, I love you this much. I can tell you Solomon was blessed because of sacrifice. The sacrifices that he made. The sacrifices that he showed God. God, I love you so much. Today I am brought you into the house of God. The presence of God has come. The presence of God has come. And therefore I must sacrifice sheep and oxen that nobody can number. In others, they looked at them and they said, let's not count. It is too much. Is somebody being blessed? I want you to think about that because it's important. Every time we sacrifice to God, let us think about how much we love God and whether we are just giving him change. God is not interested even in your money. He says a cattle in a thousand hills belongs to him. So he's not interested in your money. You, whatever money you have is even his. So he just wants you to show him that you are grateful, that you, are, you love him, that you care for what he has done for you. He has given you a job. He has taken you through school. There are people who could not go to school because their parents could not afford a thing. You just need to show God, God, I love you because you managed, you gave me an opportunity to go to school. And, and, and when you go to the university and get a degree, I tell you, thank God, because there are people who could not write their names. I told you here in the pulpit that I had some people when we were in primary school who could not write their names. And you don't know why they can't write their names. So Mwamba, when you, you do that research and get your PhD, you should know it's God's favor. There are people who can't pass exams. Am I saying something? There are people who couldn't pass even the, the class 7 exam, as we were the class 7 people. So there are others who couldn't pass the class 8 exam. And there are many. There are not few. There are many. So when you find yourself in the university and you are doing engineering, or you are doing something some young people like John call software engineering, hallelujah, Software engineering. You should thank God. Because there is somebody who is shika. Always is shika nisha iso numbers. Munaka kama amuku enda class na watu. Simuli waona. We used to debate when we were in standard four, I think. Standard four in primary school. Debate had been introduced. So people had to be forced to stand and debate. You remember those motions? I don't know, you are, you are, you are on the opposition and you are in the proposition. And then people are being forced to stand and, and speak English. My friend. Uko. Uko tumefunzo masomo na kikamba, my friend. Unangangana, professor. You know some of you are born, born city, Kena Joshua are born city. Huko nyumbani, kuna vituko. Hmm? Kuna vituko. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we need to appreciate God by sacrifices. Whatever God has given us, we need to know it is favor. And we need to come to the house of God with a sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that in fact, the word sacrifice itself is self-explanatory. How many of you don't understand what sacrifice is? Sacrifice is not normal. You go beyond your capacity to sacrifice what you have so that you can honor God. 
I believe these numbers of cattle, numbers of oxen and sheep, was a very big sacrifice because people took most of the things from their, their, their whatever they keep. I don't know now English in Mepote Apo. Mali unaweka hizo ngombe sinaitwa nini? Zizi la ngombe. Yeah, hiyo kitu. <laughs> Mtu ame, amengoa yote akapeleka kwa Mungu ikachinjwe for sacrifice. So sacrifice is important brethren and uh, nowadays you will meet people who oppose everything which 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 relate to money don't listen to them just do the work of god god will bless you please know that when sacrifices were made by the people and the priests who are sanctified came out of the holy place and the singers praised and worshiped god and these singers were wearing uniforms with the musical instruments the glory of the Lord filled the house of, the, of God. The glory of God did what? Filled the house of God. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11 and 14 to 14 says, And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present, were sanctified. Tell somebody, sanctified. You don't go to the presence of God when you are not sanctified. Sanctified. They were sanctified. And did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers. The Levites were the singers. Can you imagine? All of them of Asaph and of Eman or Amman. Haman, of Jeduldum with their sons and their, and their brethren. Being arrayed in white linen, having symbols and posteries and apps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests sounding with the trumpets, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and the praises of the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That, the, that, the, that then the house was filled with cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Hallelujah. You know, brethren, as we, as we, as we dedicate our sangha, this can happen. You need to hear that. This can happen. It can happen depending on how we prepare ourselves to be visited by God. This was a serious preparation for them to be visited by God. For them to, to be in the presence of God. And for God to show up, they need a lot of preparation. One thing these people did, the priests were all sanctified. And all the Levites were the singers. And you know, I'm learning that the singers were singing together with their sons. I don't know where the daughters are here. And their brethren. You know, Bible, Bible usually calls women and men, men. So I imagine this, this, the daughters could be hidden in the sons. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, don't misinterpret. Don't, don't in, 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 take me bad. Eh? I am not sure what, where, where the women were. But the issue is, these people 
were coming up together with their children and they were singing to the Lord. And as a Christian, I think we must learn to train our children to do what we do. To begin to shape up the way we do things and they begin to follow us and do what we do. I have a, I have a young man who is my my, 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 my grand son called Kian. Kian, everywhere he is, he is holding sticks and beating your legs. Actually, that is what he does. Even when he comes and is held by the grandma here, he's busy looking at his father, how he's doing it. And he, if he comes now anywhere, he will be beating the drums. And nowadays I saw him trying to do the legs. <laughs> so we are going to have another drumist very soon. A superstar coming from our own. Now, this is what they are doing here. These people are doing it with their sons. So, Mwamba, all these boys of yours, what are they doing? Are they seated in the, in the house today? They must rise up and begin doing things in the house of God. Praise the Lord. I'm happy when I see Ruby standing here and worshiping. It's exciting. Praise the Lord. It's one of us. It's, it's, one, it's one from our priests. They are singing and enjoying and doing everything. Hmm? Eh? Esther, where is your daughter? I just see her smiling out there. Tell her, go up. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Don't, don't get it. Don't be offended. We, we are just challenging ourselves. Where are our children? Are they doing what we do? These are the people tomorrow, if you don't check, you will meet them in the streets having a very special air. Utaona manuele imefanywa style. Utaanza kuuliza huyu ni mwanaume ama ni mwanamke. So bring them to the house of God. Teach them what you love. Let them begin to do what you do. Hmm? Kelvin, you are so young. Begin, let them begin now, Masaka. Begin to, <laughs> to do things in the house of God. Your children should all be doing something in the house of God. I like the way they dance there. I'm sure from dancing there they will come to the, to the to, to, to worship the Lord. So we need to train our children to get involved with what we do. If they can't sing, they should be able to do something else. I see some of our young men now are in the, in the technical department. They are helping us. This is what we want. Using your profession in the house of God and being seen active. Not being seen just anywhere. Eh? Loitering. Any lo what I have seen again in this scripture is that uh, the, the Levites were arrayed in white linen. In white linen. I'm not saying that you must wear white linen. But we are saying when the worshippers come to worship, when the choir come to sing, when people come to the house of God, they must be smart. The worship should be in uniform. Praise the Lord. Is it too expensive to buy dresses, Grace? Women are changing dresses like nobody's business. Others are never worn for two years. So let's buy uniforms. Let's buy. Let's buy some. You, every Sunday you say, I'm coming to church. Or the, the whole worship team will come wearing either red. And I'm sure you have clothes which look like red. You all come in uniform. The choir the same. Because we are coming to the altar of the Lord to worship God. And we are coming with the sacrifices. Never come to the house of God without a sacrifice. Come carrying a sacrifice in the house of God. So that when we worship, we sacrifice. And then God will show up in our meetings. And will begin to do miracles. And these people are singing with equipment. 
the symbols and the palm trees and the apps and all. <laughs> we, have, we, we don't even have somebody to play a rhythm guitar. When Benjamin leaves, we have nobody to play the lead guitar. And people are just seated here. Yeah. Elliot, you should come and play those guitars here. Even if, you, even if you are off key, we will understand. Let's have women. I've seen in, in social media one woman who is playing guitar very nicely in a choir. And you just, I just admire, I keep going back to see that woman playing guitar. You feel so nice. And women are seated here, beautiful ones. Beauty will never take you anywhere. Come and worship God. <laughs> Come and worship God. Come and worship God. When you worship God, He brightens your beauty. He makes you more beautiful. Hallelujah. Is somebody listening? Come and worship God. Come and play equipment. We want to have enough equipment here. The other drums, which I don't know what they are called, the ones which stand like this, Professor. We need people who can play those ones. Mukotuapa. We also need this one of Joshua, somebody who knows how to play it nicely. Unakuja nayo hapa. When we are busy singing, all the things are there. Even a whistle. Beep, 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 beep. We are worshiping God. Once we get into worship, Professor, I like the way Professor dances. Even if the song is not working, Professor is so busy. Ako Dani, Dani Sana. We need to get into that level where we encourage the worship. When they are singing here, we are also together singing. Hmm? Praise the Lord. He kusimama kama muti. Yo kid, I was this idea worship. I was doing here kapisa dani. Bwana yesu asifiwe sana. So you see these people are also having trumpets. How I wish we can have trumpeters in this church. I love trumpets. I love them. I wish we can have trumpeters. People who can play trumpets. So the problem will be buying a trumpet. And I know God will supply, isn't it? He has supplied this thing, we cannot buy a trumpet. No, we can buy a trumpet. Hallelujah. So our children who are in school, please enroll into some of those things. Me, I can't do anything now. My age does not allow me to coordinate some things. Yeah. So you, you learn these things. Learn them and uh, come and sing and we shall be happy. So it came to pass, verse 13, it came to pass even, it, it, uh, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. I'm not sure what the other symbol in Bibles mean here. But for me, I imagine they were now trumpeting and they reach a level where the rhythm is now agreeing, where the songs were flowing, where everything is. You know, even God loves good things. That's why the choir must harmonize. They are called harmonies. They must harmonize the voices. So when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercy, and Joyce has left. She's the one who sings for me. For his mercy, and you are forever. When they were singing that, the whole house was filled with cloud. And the presence of God came down. The ministers were not able to minister. It was so beautiful. I can tell you, we can achieve this in our church. We can make sure every time of worship, all of us are happy. They are excited. We are jumping up and down. People are dancing along the corridors here. People are worshiping God. 
I can tell you, God will be happy with us. He will be happy with us. And all of us are sanctified. All of us are living good lives. All of us are blessed. And I can tell you, God will supply to us according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He will do it to us, to each and every person who is looking for a job, who is looking for a husband, who is looking for a wife to marry, who is looking for promotion. God will come down. His presence will be up here. And all of us will begin to be blessed. 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 It is a wonderful thing. So church, as we prepare for the, for the ordination, for the, for the dedication of our church, let's begin to prepare now. Let's begin to do things now. As I con before I conclude, I will read the names of the, of the, of the planning committee, of planning committee, that we want the, the planning committee to begin sitting next week. In the, in the first week of October, to begin planning for the, for, for the dedication of the sanctuary in October. So that we align our things properly, we begin to look for the money required, we begin to do everything that we need, we invite the visitors we want to invite, and do everything in excellence. We may have to train our hashas, we may have to train our security people, we may have to train our protocol people to know how to manage crowds. Yonisau. To know how to do things. To know how to arrange, to arrange yourselves. And where to stand. And what to do. All that thing must be harmonized. Because you never know. It will be a great day. Amen? It will be a great day. So, as I said, I promise you, if we do things rightly, God will show up. And you do, as he did, when Solomon was dedicating the temple of God. Now, something else that Solomon did, Solomon took time to praise God. He took time to praise God. Solomon spent some quality time thanking God and appreciating God for enabling him to fulfill the wishes of it and the intentions of his father David to build a dwelling place for God. He also blessed the Lord for choosing Jerusalem as the city where a temple would be built to honor him, his name, and also chosen David to be king over Israel. I want to this will be my last reading today. I want us to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. And if you can find our NLT Bible, is the one I want, I want to read. NLT Bible version. So the Bible says, allow me to sip some water. Solomon prayed, Oh Lord, you have said that you would live in a thick cloud of darkness. Now I am built a glorious temple for you. Standing before him and gave, his, and gave this blessing. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept the promise he made to my father, David. For he told my father from the day I brought my people out of the land of Egypt. I have never chosen a city among any of the tribes of Israel as the place where a temple should be built to honor my name. Nor have I chosen a king to lead my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem as the place for my name to be honored. And I have chosen David to be king over my people Israel. Praise the Lord. You know, there are some things that can change God's direction. There are some God. And they also remind him his promises. And now, he, he, and, 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 and as we continue, and David to be the king. You see? He had chosen, he had, had, he, he had said, now this will be my place of worship. 
This will be my place where I will dwell. This will be the place. And I can tell you, brethren, when God feels, fulfills his promises or does something to you or for you, it is important to appreciate it. When God achieves something for you, something happens in your life, it is good to appreciate God. Having a heart of gratitude in, in, in the little or big things that God gives you is key to unlocking more blessings in your life. Every time you appreciate the little or the big, you know some people think what they have seen is little. It may not even be little, according to God. It could be a lot of things. Whatever God has given you, have a heart of gratitude, of thanking him. And you see, as you do that, God will declare certain things in your life. God will speak to your life and show you direction. And also make the altar that you have created for him, his dwelling place. This is my altar now. I am blessed this altar. And we are praying as we sanctify, as we come to dedicate this, this temple, we shall be consecrating this altar. And as we, con as we consecrate this altar, we are believing that God, thing happens in this altar, God shows up. Hallelujah. When anything happens in the altar, God shows up. And we are believing God that we shall begin to see miracles and wonders in this house. We shall see salvation, people getting born again in this house. We shall see increases in this house. And we shall glorify His name. Praise the Lord. Are you happy? Are you blessed? Is it good with us? I want us to pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence. We have seen what King Solomon did. We have seen what he did. As he brought the Ark of the Covenant in the temple, how he prayed, how the singers sang, how you filled the house with a cloud, and how your presence was so much that the priest could not continue because of your presence. We are praying for your presence in this temple. Your presence to continually be with us every time we come to worship you in this house. We are praying for your presence. Lord, we want to sanctify ourselves. We want to be ready for ministry. Therefore, Lord, we are crying. The Lord remember us. Look, because we have created this, we have built this temple for your people to come and worship. For your people to come to the altar and receive blessings. Father, we thank you and we worship. We are praying, Lord, that God, our worship, will begin to take a new turn. And the people will begin to take a new turn in worship. They will know how to worship. They will know how to sacrifice. They will know how to do the things that we have planned to do today. The choir and the worship team and the players of equipment, they will do these things with excellence. And the whole congregation will dance and worship you and shout a shout of joy and worship and appreciation of who you are, O God. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. And maybe church.